the Munsters proved nothing is as it seems. And even if you think you know everything about this spooky family, there's always more surprises lurking in the shadows. But don't be afraid. It's not all scary. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nightmare Nick, here to peel back the spider webs on the Munsters family. As a show, it reshaped how kids looked at the stuff of nightmares, reimagined as simply relatable people who could be our own neighbors. It was admirable, actually, but this show had plenty of tricks up its sleeve, from changing faces to secret songs, and some pretty eerie cameos to boot. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up for us, and subscribe to the channel if you dare. Now, the night is young and we have many fun facts about the monsters to unveil. Let's be off. Just leave it to the Leave It to Beaver writers. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. After Leave It to Beaver writers Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher faced a successful sitcom after their lives, surely that wouldn't work with monsters, right? Shows with big scary monsters tend to scare kids. Yet when the two writers decided to keep with a similar premise, in a typical suburban family who just happened to be monsters, they had to work carefully. That's the spirit. But hey, Frankenstein's monster is just a regular family man like Dad. Not so scary. And it's a good thing experienced writers took on this show, since these iconic monsters came with some pretty big copyright stamps on them. Thankfully, Universal Studios, which owned the monsters, also happened to own the rights to every creepy crawly baddie in popular media that actually gave them a pretty helpful edge over the Addams Family, and helped the monsters beat the Addams Family in ratings. Fans of the monsters were fans of Dracula, Frankenstein, all the classics. Color me surprised. The Munsters had a few people confused when it started. Its pilot episode was filmed entirely in color, but then everything after was in black and white. So what happened? There are some conflicting reports. First and foremost, everything suggests money was the big cause. The show rose to fame right when color TV did, but prices to make color episodes rose as well. From there, things get a bit messy. Some say it was also to make sure the show didn't scare kids too much with added detail. And stop playing with that nose. <laughs> Others think the black and white lent a gritty, nostalgic feel, similar to vintage horror classics. Either way, I believe the show in color would have had a different tone entirely, so filming on a budget worked out. This lily just wouldn't bloom. When shows with similar premises run simultaneously, things can get tense. Look no further than the magical battle of Bewitched vs. I Dream of Genie. And for more on that discourse, or to catch up with those two casts, check out those videos next. But there was a whole other supernatural rivalry brewing between Team Munster and Team Adams. <laughs> So when Lily Munster, originally called Phoebe, and played by Joan Marshall, started to resemble Morticia Adams too much, producers had to start at ground zero. So the role went instead to Yvonne DiCarlo, a movie star. Her reputation preceded her, and she came with some prima donna attitude that Al Lewis and Fred Gwynn did not care for. As far as they were concerned, she was in the wrong neighborhood, and movie stardom had no place on sitcoms. Boy, were they wrong, fortunately, and Al Lewis admitted as much. Sing your heart out. Everyone knows the Adams Family theme song. They're creepy and they're kooky, all that good stuff. Shame the Munsters didn't have that. Or did they? Actually, they did have a song with lyrics. A pretty good one, too. The lyrics tell people, hey, if you hear footsteps at night and shake hands with a clammy palm, don't worry, it's not the undead, it's just the monsters. It just so happens that I was in the park last night at that time. And I didn't see any fiends or monsters. Jazz guitarist and composer Jack Marshall put together the music, while writer Bob Mosher wrote the lyrics. And if these lyrics are news to you, that's because they never actually aired on TV. But they can be heard as the first track on the 1960s album At Home with the Monsters. Because every evening is Halloween at the Monsters. The creepy feeling we've seen this before. 
It's not just the monsters that were familiar, it's the props too. Grandpa Munster's famous laboratory was made by special effects technician Kenneth Strickfadden, who years before had designed Dr. Frankenstein's lab in the 1931 film Frankenstein. Look closely and you'll see it actually has some of the same parts from that classic movie. Talk about deep meta. That goes for other important props too, particularly the Munster coach. How do you like it, Herman? I had it customized just for you. Designed by none other than George Barris. If that name isn't familiar, his other creation will be. The custom car designer made the Batmobile for the 1966 series. Herman's coach is actually three separate Model T Ford bodies, making the Munster coach 18 feet long in total. $18,000 and 21 days later, Barris had a totally custom brass radiator, fenders, and of course, blood red upholstery. Barris did such a good job, producers ordered a car for Grandpa too, which which became the Dragula. This one required a little grand theft casket, since funeral homes apparently only sold coffins when someone died, so Barris and the funeral home owner took a stroll, while some of his goons sprinted away a broken casket, leaving nothing but some money in its place. Oh, and if their cuckoo clock looks a bit weird, that's because it's a raven that shouts nevermore as a direct reference to the king of creepy Edgar Allan Poe. Renowned voice actor Mel Blanc voiced the clock. It's on his resume along with a certain bunny. Familiar freaky faces. It goes without saying the Munsters used a lot of makeup. Sure, it ate away at the workday, but it let the show do some pretty sneaky tricks. By himself, Fred Gwynn played three separate roles, his iconic Herman Munster, as well as Herman's twin brother, Charlie, but also a failed experiment named Johan. Back into the closet, back, 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 back. back. Who, of course, looked like Frankenstein's monster. The makeup also helped hide some weird age dynamics. Al Lewis was supposed to be Yvonne Di Carlo's dad, but in reality, he was a year younger than the actress. Of course, makeup procedures changed over the years as we perfected them, but also because of tech limitations. You can't really tell in the black and white episodes, but Herman is a light violet because it picked up the light better. But when the show got a colorful update in the 80s, Herman went back to green again. <laughs> Imagine that! Rising from the grave with some reluctance. The cast of the Munsters became something larger than a TV show, and a lot of people decided to capitalize on that. So by the 1980s, Al Lewis used his Grandpa Munster fame to open a restaurant in New York City, Grandpa's Bella Gente. Fred Gwynn actually drew the logo of the side profile Grandpa, since Fred had done some cartooning for the Harvard Lampoon. For more info on the lives of these actors, we have a Munsters cast then and now that's perfect for you. The Munsters were also featured in a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. It's the town car of the Munster family. That was hell on earth for Fred Gwynn though. Playing Herman was a double-edged sword. On the one hand, he could be anonymous out of costume. On the other, there was so much costume. He spent more time getting dressed than actually acting. The cameras didn't show Herman Munster downing whiskey shots so he could get through the parade. And back on set, he downed gallons of lemonade between takes and still lost 10 pounds from all that costume. Family reunions and separations. Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis had such terrific chemistry because it was basically a reunion for them. Already acting together in Car 54, Where Are You? Car 54, Where Are You? But the family didn't always stick together. Beverly Owen, the original Marilyn, had to leave after 13 episodes after a bad breakup left her constantly in tears. Pat Priest ended up taking over the role, and not just for her acting, but because she looked almost identical to Owen's in height, build, everything but the hair. Nothing a wig couldn't fix. The role of Eddie Munster was almost Bill Mumy, but he'd be okay as he went on to star in Lost in Space. Danger Will Robinson, you haven't seen our Lost in Space deep dive yet? The role of Eddie Munster first went to Nate Happy Derman, but his Eddie was a little too wolfish. So then the network chose Butch Patrick with the instructions to basically be Beaver Cleaver, but with pointy ears. Shocking and horrifying. Turn on the TV these days and you can see just about anything on screen. Jump back a few decades and Barbara Eden's navel and Lucille Ball's belly bump were totally inappropriate. Same thing with couples sharing a bed, but that didn't stop Lily and Herman Munster. The Munsters didn't even have to show any action and people freaked because they were freaks. Well, monsters. And them chatting in bed together was a pretty big deal and also very groundbreaking 
to the Munster's home. Ever want to step into the wacky and spooky halls of your favorite monster family? What a quaint old house! Well, you can, thanks to Waxahachie, Texas natives Charles and Sandra McKee. Welcome to the Munster Mansion. Who took the idea of a very Brady renovation to a whole new level. They created an exact replica of the Munster home, complete with crooked weather vane and moving stairs. They put their monstrous property to good use every Halloween by hosting tours, and all the fun go to charities. The original Munster house sits just down the street from the Cleaver household. One more tie from two legendary sitcoms. Nothing proves that appearances can be deceiving quite like the Munsters, or as it was almost called, Love Thy Monster. I hope you enjoyed learning a little more about 1313 Mockingbird Lane. What surprised you the most? Share your favorite Munster memory in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe so you always catch the latest trip down memory lane. And don't be afraid if you run into vampires and werewolves along the way. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks for watching.